Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia, CPA and Small Business Consultant. This session is called Advanced Reports in QuickBooks for Accounting Professionals. Okay, let's get started with Advanced Reports in QuickBooks for Accounting Professionals. The agenda for today, we're gonna to discuss building a custom reports menu using Google Chrome as your main navigation browser for working with QuickBooks Online. We're gonna take advantage of the bookmarks functionality in Google Chrome to build really quickly to access reports for you. We're gonna talk about tags, locations, and classes. We're gonna compare them, do a couple of examples of how that gives you better information for your custom reporting needs. Then we're gonna talk about the custom summary report. Some people call that the hidden report because it's kind of hard to get to, and it has some really different functionality than all the other reports that are available in QuickBooks Online. Then we're gonna move on to the advanced version of QuickBooks Online and the features that are available only in that advanced edition, such as custom fields and the new custom report builder, which is the most powerful report building tool in the entire QuickBooks world. Then lastly, we're gonna talk about advanced or additional resources you can use to learn about reports after this session. So let's start with building your own reports menu. And the premise here is you will be using Google Chrome as your browser for QuickBooks Online. This won't work in Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge or Safari, only works at least well or the way we're gonna show you here with Google Chrome as your browser. So you're gonna add bookmarks and you're gonna create folders to organize those bookmarks. To make this function really easy for you, I build a spreadsheet which I'm calling the ultimate QBO reporting database. And basically is a list of all the reports available in QuickBooks Online across all versions with a detailed explanation of what every report is, which version is it on, is it in plus, essentials, or advanced, and a direct URL to get straight into that report. So I'm gonna show you how that works, how you can use that, and how you can build your own custom reports menu. So let's go right into QuickBooks Online to take a look at that. Okay, I'm on QuickBooks Online right now, and I also opened in another tab the link that you see on the slides there for that QBO Ultimate Reports database. And what you can see here is all the reports that are available in QuickBooks Online as of the date of this, of this uh, session. There's 115 in there. As more get added, I will be adding more into this database. And you will notice that there's a link, uh, a hyperlink that will take you straight into that report. So if you click on any of these hyperlinks or if you were to copy the hyperlink and then paste it into the URL after you logged into QuickBooks Online, you do have to be logged in, it will take you straight into that report. So why is that valuable? Why is that important? Well, because it works like that, because it's URL based, I can add these to my bookmarks or to my favorites, and I can create a custom reporting menu. So let's say this balance sheet comparison is the one that I usually use for uh, custom reporting. I will click on the little star here next to the URL and click on add bookmark. You can also click on the three little buttons here, click on bookmarks, and then um, this is where you can click on bookmark this tab. So either way, it allows you to bookmark that page. If you don't see your bookmarks menu, just make sure you click on show bookmarks bar, turn that off and on to enable that. So if I disable it, you won't see anything under the URL. I would have to then enable it so I can see those bookmarks in there. So once I create that bookmark, which can be done by clicking on the little star, clicking on add bookmark, and I give it a name, so I'm gonna call it BS Comparison and click on done. It will now create a link and you see it right there, BS Comparison. That means that it doesn't matter where I am in QuickBooks, let's say I happen to be on the banking tab and I wanna quickly jump to that report, I click on BS Comparison and boom, it takes me right to that report. Another really important uh, thing about this is, let's say for example, I happen to be in the invoices section and I'm researching my invoices and then all of a sudden, I wanna see that report, but I don't wanna lose the screen that I'm looking at. I can right click on that custom bookmark and click on add or open in a new tab. And what that does is it opens up the report in another tab so I don't lose the screen that I'm in. So I can switch back and forth across the tab. So that's just, just sort of an interesting uh, way of, of, of uh, leveraging that uh, those custom bookmarks. So let's say for example, I'm also gonna put my profit and loss there in my bookmarks. So I go straight to the report from the reports menu 
or as I mentioned earlier, you can copy and paste the URL by using the reports database I, I gave you guys. And once you have the report up, you can click and drag that URL into the bookmarks menu, which will be the same as clicking on the star and clicking on add bookmark. It does the same thing. And then let's change the name. Let's edit that to a PNL and then click on save. So now I have my BS comparison and my PNL, my two custom uh, links or my custom bookmarks. I can leave them there if I want to, or I can create a menu. So I can right click and click on add folder and I can call it custom reports menu. Okay. Just giving it a sort of a, a long name there and I can click and drag those and dump them into that folder. So all of a sudden I click on my custom reports menu and I have both of my reports in there. I can take it one step further, right click and click on add folder and in it I can have a subfolder. So I can call it here financial statements or something like that, whatever, obviously whatever name you want to give it. So financial statements, click on save and then under it I can click and drag both of those in there. Okay. And then now I have a sub menu that says financial statements. I can create as many sub menus as I want to. Again, you can create an entire reports menu. For example, I actually went in there and took the entire database of reports that you see there. And I went in there and I created my own custom reports menu that contains every single report available, all versions of QuickBooks online. So obviously that took me a couple of hours to put together, but I'm just showing you the final application of having access to that resource, how that can become really valuable for you. So I strongly recommend you, you try doing this to speed up your workflow. Okay, let's move on to tags, classes, and locations. We're going to start with classes, which is the most powerful dimension feature in QuickBooks Online to build custom reports from. Classes are available in Plus and Advanced. If you're using Plus, it's limited to 40 combined with locations. If you're using Advanced, you have unlimited classes. Classes have the option or the toggle to pick whether or not you want it to be a transaction level tool or if you want it to be a line item level tool. Line item means on each row. So if you have an invoice with seven items, you have to pick the class for each of the items. It's possible that you have one transaction that all belongs to the same class and you go in there on each item and pick that class. Or it's possible that you have multiple line items hitting multiple classes. That's the great flexibility of classes. Now, classes are available in almost all transactions with the exception of payroll at the line item level. And they're not available in receive payments, bill payments, pay down credit cards and transfers just because those transactions are typically not profit and loss type of transactions. Uh, so you're not going to be able to classify at any of those transactions. Let's talk about locations. Locations work very similar to classes. They have a limit of 40 when combined with classes. So you can do the most 40 locations or classes, whatever combination it is. If you work with QuickBooks Online Advanced, you will have unlimited locations. And the main difference is that locations cannot be used at the line item level. They must be used or can only be used at the transaction level. It is available in all transactions except payroll, payroll receipt payments, bill payment, pay down credit card, and transfers. The main difference between classes and locations, other than being able to do it at the line item level, is that locations will allow you to do a balance sheet by location. You cannot do that by classes. Locations can also allow you to create custom templates for your invoices or your estimates based on which location you're, you're estimating or invoicing from something you don't get with classes. And finally, we have, we have tags. Tags are available across all versions of QuickBooks Online. They are limited to 300 total and um, can only be used at the transaction level, very similar to locations from that perspective. Tags are available only in certain transactions, not as many as with classes and locations, but tags is a feature that, that keeps getting improved on, so it's possible that as time goes, tags will be available in more and more locations. Now, here's a quick cheat sheet on this slide that sort of gives you an idea on the advantages or disadvantages of tags, locations, and classes, because you're going to have to pick which is going to be the best dimension for creating those, those custom reports in the future. The little differences you see here is, for example, tags are available only in some 
or limited reports where classes and locations are available in most reports. Now, classes are available at the line item level where uh, tags, locations, and classes, sorry, tags and locations will only be available at the header level, even though classes can, can be either or. You can pick classes to be either header or line item. As I mentioned earlier, locations are available in the balance sheet, balance sheet by location, and you can have custom sales forms by location. We haven't talked about custom fields yet, which we are. Custom fields are also necessary to add into the comparison, especially for people using QuickBooks Online Advanced, which is the only place where you can see custom fields. And custom fields are great because you get a lot more. You get 48 custom fields, so you get a lot more. And you can also pick and choose in which transaction you want to see those custom fields. We're going to show you that uh, briefly. Okay, so we're in QuickBooks Online here, and we're going to do a search in our report section. We're going to search for class. Once we search for class, you get to see all the reports that are default available by class. So we have profit and loss by class, purchases by class detail, sales by class summary. All these reports are available by default. Another really cool thing about classes and locations as well is they're available for filtering in almost every type of report. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say I go to my regular profit and loss report and there's my profit and loss and I click on any of those numbers there to get a sort of a detailed report. So I'm seeing a detailed report in my screen and I can click on customize, go into filter, and then you're going to see that classes and locations are available there. This is what we meant by classes and locations are available almost everywhere. Take a look at tags are not available here in this particular report. So it's a really good example of how classes and locations are available in more places to be filterable or to be groupable than tags. This is why I love tags, but if I'm using plus and I can use classes and locations instead, I'm probably going to recommend that. So I can click on class here and then I can click on the drop down and then just pick, let's say, my retail class and click on run report. So now I get to see whatever report, detail report I'm looking at, but now it's filtered only by transactions for that particular class. If I click on customize and I remove the class filter and I click on run report, that's going to show me all the transactions that are there. Uh, that are there without the class filter. But here it says group by. I can only pick classes or locations to be grouping the transactions by. So I can see all my retail class locations, Shopify locations, wholesale locations, and they're all grouped in there, which again gives me another dimension or another power behind being able to run reports. If you look at the amount total, you can total that amount as well. In a custom report scenario, we can pick uh, where we want to see the columns. So I'm going to move amount all the way here, maybe to the top, to the third option, click on run report, and then I'm going to scroll to the right, and then I'm going to collapse them again one more time so we can see our running totals for that particular class. Plus, we have the things that are not being specified, which we'll discuss briefly. So that's just a quick example of how much more powerful classes and locations are than tags and the custom fields, for that matter. Now let's go back into the reports and let's use uh, uh, classes for what we mostly we will use classes for, which is a profit and loss by class. So we're going to go ahead and run profit and loss by class. We're going to search it in there and we're going to get to see a profit and loss by class. I'm going to go ahead and collapse the report, make it a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to point out that my total sales for my retail uh, class is 181. Total sales for Shopify, 224. Total sales for wholesale. 259, and there's a whole bunch of transactions that um, that are in not specified. What does not specified mean? Well, if I click on that total and I click on any of the transactions that I see here, so I just pick any of them, I pick on this uh, transaction, we're going to see that this transaction has a blank class. For this particular scenario, we are using the detail uh, level of classes or the per row, per line item level of classes. So I'm going to put here uh, Shopify and then I'm going to assign that transaction to my Shopify class. Classes are totally custom. I can go to add new and create any class I want. I can call this commercial, residential, whatever, right? However dimension of data you want to be using for reporting your transactions. Locations are here in the top. Notice they're not at the line item level because as we mentioned earlier, locations are only transaction level. They are not line item level. If you look at tags, tags are here right under 
the transaction details. These are also location level. Uh, sorry, they're also header level or transaction level. We're going to get the tags in a second because tags have a little bit of a different behavior than class and locations. We're going to continue to focus on class and locations. Okay. So this transaction has commercial class and location uh, and NY office, right? I'm going to take this customer name here. It's a random customer we have here. And I'm going to use it as a filter just to kind of show you and then click on save and close. So now that we moved that transaction or that we classified it, I'm going to go back into my report summary. And now we're going to get to see the commercial class. Now it shows up in my PL by, uh, by class. And we see those $50 being classified in there. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to click on total income. So again, we're going to get a detail to see all the transactions. Let me collapse my left navigation bar so we can get a little bit more information. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just for now to get a little bit more information. I'm going to click on customize. I'm going to zoom back in. And then I'm going to go into filter and then click on name or customer name. I'll click on name and I'll put that customer in there that I have my random customer in my sample file. I'm going to click on run report and then I'm going to see only the transactions that are associated with this uh, report. I'm currently grouping this. Uh, I don't have any special grouping here. So I'm going to group it by class and click on run report. And we get to see the two transactions I have for these particular customer. Notice the one that we just classified as commercial for $50 and a different transaction that was there classified as Shopify before. So you get to really see right how we can use this grouping and this filtering to filter by class or filter by location is really interesting. You can also group by location. If I click on group by location, click on run report, I can see the sales based on locations. Notice that this one was at, uh, used using the NY office and this one says not specified. That means it's missing the location. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to you pick one of my locations. Let's say I have a Miami office and a New York office. Let's say that's when I, where I ship from, whatever I'm using the locations for. Click on that, click on save and close. And now I'm going to see both transactions gear grouped into the NY office, even though they have multiple classes. I'm going to click on the gear menu and I'm going to click on show more. And I'm going to let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And I'll refresh the screen while it's zoomed in. Just make it a little bit more compatible to a webinar uh, view. And then we're going to click on this gear menu again. And I'm going to click on scroll up and find class. And I'm also going to reorder the columns and I'm going to move class to the top just so we can see it first and then click on run report. So now what I can see here is I can take the same detail report. I can group it by locations as I, I did it before. Click on run report. I get to see all my sales by location, but then I get to see my actual uh, class right there and then. So again, as I'm analyzing my reports, trying to gain insights to see what's going on, we get deeper insights. With with a, custom, with a regular reporting mechanism in QuickBooks Online, you can also have one level of grouping. We're going to discuss a little bit later on the advanced version of QuickBooks Online that has the custom report builder that allows me to do multiple grouping. But for now, just know that I can have one level of grouping, uh, in this case, classes or locations, which is we are showcasing at the moment. And I can also filter it. So right now, I have everything uh, grouped by location. So I have all my Miami office sales and then my New York office sales. And let's say I only want to see wholesale and Shopify. I don't want to see retail. Right? So what I could do is I can go to customize. I can scroll down to my filters, take a look at my class, click on the drop down menu and say, you know what? I only want to see, what did I say before? Retail and Shopify. I don't want to see wholesale. Let's say that's what it is. I want to see retail Shopify, no wholesale, no commercial. Click on run report. And there it is. It's only showing those transactions. Okay. I have the amount here all the way to the right. And as I showed you earlier, uh, because of the zoom in, and the amount of columns that I have is all scrolled to the right, but I can remove certain columns that I don't want. So let's say I don't want to see um, memo description. I don't want to see account. I don't want to see balance. I only want to see the date uh, and the name and the class and the amount. So I just remove the, the fields I don't want to see. And now my report is going to show a lot less data. So I don't have to scroll um, 
left and right to see the information. I can also collapse any of these and then get my total for that location. Let's go back to my report list and let's do a location report. So I'm going to click on location, uh, profit and loss by location, probably the best one to use in this case. And then we get to see a profit and loss by location. If I, have, if I have things under not specified, well, that's probably because I'm missing entering the location for that transaction. So let's look at this negative 400 discount that we have here. I'll click on that. Let's take a look at the transaction itself. And it looks like we don't have a location. So I'm going to add, let's say Miami office as my location. Click on save and close. And then we'll go back to that report. So back into my profit and loss by location, and all of a sudden, it's no longer under not specified, it's right in my Miami office, exactly where I wanted it, or where I told it I wanted it to be. So it's just really important that you do fill the class and location on every one of your transactions to avoid having things in that not specified column, because under that not specified column, uh, if you have a lot of information, the QuickBooks user will become, uh, it won't trust the reports, right? Because it's gonna say, well, What's the point of having a PL by class or location if I have a whole bunch of things that are unclassified? So you really want to make the extra effort to make sure that all your classes and locations are properly selected across, across all the transactions. Okay, let's take a look at tags now. So I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. I'm going to click on the gear menu and then click on tags. This is going to take me to my tag center. Okay, In the tag center, you're going to see two big boxes in the top, money in and money out. This is basically a quick dashboard, a quick preview. Here in the drop-down menu, you see source, supervisor, salesperson, ready to ship, country. Those are custom tags. Your QuickBooks will not come with any of these things by default. So if I click on ready to ship, I get to see the transactions that contain ready to ship. Doesn't seem like there's any. If I contain supervisor, then I get to see all the transactions by supervisor. If I click on pickup and delivery, I get to see the transactions by that tag. If I click on source, I see them by source. So what are exactly these tags or tag groupings? I'm gonna scroll down here, and then I'm gonna show you that there's one, two, three, four, five, six tag groupings, and they're all, all color coding. Your QuickBooks file will not come with any of these. You have to create them. If you look at country, for example, I created a tag for Canada, Mexico, other, Spain, USA. I can create my own custom. Let me click on new go to new tag, and then I'll put uh, France, and I'll make France under the country tag group, and I click on save. So if I wanted to track sales by, let's say, country or destination, tags is perfect for that. So that's just an example. Next to Canada, you see here it says two transactions. Those are two transactions that were tagged using the Canada tag. If I click on that, that takes me to a list of all the transactions using that Canada tag, and I can reclassify them if I want to. So for example, Let's say this 5,000 doesn't belong to Canada. It belongs to France. I click on that, click on update tags, click on add tags, and then I select France from the list, select that, and then click on apply, and that will now reclassify that tag. So when I go back to all tags, and then we look at all my transactions by the tag country, I see that under France, now it says one transaction. If I click on that one transaction, it gives me the one transaction that we just re-tagged or reclassified the tag to. Okay, so that's kind of the concept of how tags work. I'm gonna create a new tag grouping from scratch. I'm gonna click on new and click on tag group. And let's say I wanna create a tag group for whether this is a, a delivery sale or a pickup sale. So I'm gonna call it um, type, let's do type of sale. And I already have something similar in there, but I'm just gonna use a new one as an example. We're gonna make this, let's say, this weird uh, orangey pink color, click on save. So I create my group, and then let's say this is gonna be a pickup versus a delivery, okay? And then click on add. So basically, there's two of them, okay? There's another tag with that name, so I'm just gonna click on, I'm gonna put the, the plural deliveries, and then click on done. So there it is, there's my sale type, deliveries, or pickup. There's no transactions under it right now because I haven't created any transactions under it. But let's say, for example, I'll create a, an invoice. And we'll select here a customer at random. And then we'll pick up a, a product at random. And then we'll put here $500. 
and we're going to click on sale type where is it right here under tags and i'm going to go down to sale type and then put this is a pickup sale okay and then i'm going to click on save and then i'll do a new transaction let me click on save a new and then i'll pick another customer at random here abc a triple a construction then i'll pick another product here different product altogether let's make this let's say 900 and then we'll make the tag a deliveries and then click on save and close so now i have two transactions using two different tags when i click on type of sale you can see them clearly in here now up here in the top this graph is for the purpose of me switching this to type of sale and i can see a quick um a quick illustration or a quick graph of the numbers that belong to each tag you can also see it on a report you don't have to or you're not stuck to just this particular screen for that you can pull a regular report that contains tags so let's go into reports i'm going to click on reports on the left hand side and then click on the reports center where it says find report i'm going to search for tag and then i'm going to see transaction list by tag group when i click transaction list by tag group it will default to um, the ungrouped tags which we'll discuss in a second but i'm going to go down here and pick my type of sale click on run report and then we get to see both of our sales that belong to each of these as i mentioned earlier you know when you have a really big screen and you see that the report fills your screen you might want to um, re sort of reshape or resize the the columns or the fields that you want to see kind of pick what fields you want to see so you can see less information and not uh clutter your screen and you can have sort of one page in the screen so i'm just showing you how we add and remove columns into the report so there we go that's all all of our sales by uh, by tag if i continue to create transactions and i'll create a new invoice for one of those two tags so i'll pick another customer here at random and another amount and a product and we'll make this as say twelve hundred dollars and we go to sale let's make a pickup and i click on save and close I go back into my report. Okay, my sale, my transaction list by tag. Click on report, run report one more time, and then I get to see two transactions in there. If I collapse each of them, I get my subtotal. So I get to see my total sales for deliveries and total sales for a pickup. I can also see this in the context of a profit and loss report. So I'm going to go to reports and type profit and loss by tag. And then here it defaults to ungroup tags. I'm going to change that to type of sale. Click on run report. And then I get to see my sales for delivery and pickup as two different columns. It is a profit and loss report. So it can also track expenses by tag. So let's say I'm going to add an expense here. Let's go to add a new expense. And let's say I'm going to pay a Federal Express okay, for some sort of uh, shipping expense for for the client oops let me create the vendor again so fedex click on add new add it as a vendor and let's say this is for the tag sale type deliveries and let's do shipping do i have shipping shipping and postage right here and let's say that's 27 dollars and 50 cents i'm using the type of sale deliveries as the tag so then we can see what that looks like in the profit and loss report. So I go back into my profit and loss by tag, select my sale type of sale, click on run report, and then we can see our expense on the shipping and postage, and we can clearly see our net income or our profit at the tag level. It's a wonderful thing that it has. Now, a lot of people ask, what is the deal with these ungrouped tags? So one of the things that's pretty interesting about tags, I'm going to click on the gear menu, and then go back into tags is that you can create tags that are sort of just loose in there and they don't belong to any specific tag group so for example i want to go to new i'm just going to create a tag without creating a group and then i'm going to call this uh let's say october just just to make a random tag in there click on save and then i'm going to create another random tag uh, i'm going to call this 2021 okay so again these are ungrouped tags unstructured tags they're just sitting there, um, you know, and, and they're not limited to a specific one. They're just sitting there, and they're 
they're loose. Now, what does that mean? Uh, let's say, for example, I go and create an invoice. So we're going to go back to an invoice. Let's say an invoice I already created. So I'll go back and pull the last $1,200 invoice that I have here. Okay, and we go down into tags here, and there it is. So I'm going to go here and pick October as a tag and pick 2021 as a tag. So what's interesting about the unstructured tags or the ungrouped tags is I can have as many tags as possible. I can also create them on the fly. So let's say I want to call this sale. Again, whatever dimension you want to pick, I just created a, um, a random tag there called sale and then click on save and close. So why is this useful or how is this useful? Okay, so for example, if I go to reports and I go back into reports and I go to tag and I click on transaction list by tag group, I click on that. And then notice that one of the options here is ungroup tags. So I notice that um, the transa one transaction that has all three tags um, with it uh, show up and it basically just groups it as an unstructured uh, tag. Let's move on to the custom summary report. And some people call this the hidden report because it's a little bit difficult to find. And the only way to get that report if you don't see it in your reports menu is to copy and paste the URL from that reports database that, uh, that I gave you. So back in QuickBooks Online, in the report screen, we can type the word summary. And again, if you don't see custom summary report here, which again, sometimes you won't see it, I'll type it one more time, custom summary, you won't see it. Then you go into the report database here. You look for the custom summary report, which is here all the way at the end. It says uh, custom summary report. It's one of the hidden reports that's in there. You take that URL and you copy the URL and you paste it right. You paste it right on where you have QuickBooks open. You copy and paste that URL and it will take you to this sort of magical hidden report. Now, the reasons why it's hidden, I don't know. Maybe QuickBooks is working on a, on a better version of it and, and only allowing a few people see it. But while it still exists, I think I really do want to show you how this report works. So the really cool thing about the custom summary report is right here it says columns. I can pick any of these dimensions, customers, vendors, employees, uh, locations, classes. So for example, I'm going to do locations. And on the rows, I can pick customers, vendors, employees, locations, classes, products and services. I can pick classes and I click on run report. And this is the only report in QuickBooks that will give me a cross reference of two dimensions that are, are otherwise only available um, for you to just pick one of them or to filter one of them. Custom summary report is super powerful for that specific reason. So you do want to experiment with all the different options you have here. So for example, I'm going to pick customers by location and we'll take a look at that report. Okay, so I see all my customers and then all my sales by location. I can do, let's say, customers by class and then click on run report. And then I get to see all my customers and the class next to it. Let's say, for example, I want to see class and then quarter. So I can see my sales by class by quarter. You get to see, again, there's all sorts of great possibilities with this custom summary report. That's why I love it. And that's why I think it's important to include it in this training section. Okay, let's move on to working with custom fields in QuickBooks Online Advanced. One of the cool things about custom fields is that you are able to choose what type of transaction or what type of customer or vendor you're going to peg that custom field to. For example, when you create the first custom field, you will have the option to pick whether it's a customer level custom field, a transaction level custom field, or a vendor level custom field. When you pick customer or vendor, that custom field becomes available inside of that customer or vendor's profile and is available to use across every single transaction that's available for a customer or for a vendor. If you want a custom field to be used in both a customer transaction like an invoice and a vendor transaction like a purchase order or a bill, then you're going to pick that transaction option. Let's go into QuickBooks Online so we can do an example of this. Let's start by setting up a custom field. We're going to click on the gear menu, top right of the screen, and then we're going to click on custom fields. It should be right on top of tags. Quick reminder, these custom fields are only available in the advanced version of QuickBooks Online. You're going to see here already all the custom fields that have already been created. I created delivery location, field supervisor, authorized by project manager, and sales rep. I created these custom fields. When you do this in your QuickBooks, it will be blank. 
To create a new custom field, we're going to click on the Add Field in the top right. And then we're going to choose the name. You can call this your custom field group, similar to the tag group. So we're going to give this a name. Let's say we're going to call this Order Type. And we want to track whether this is a standard order or a special order, for example. Just one example that we can use. Here in Data Type, I can pick text and number, number only, date, or drop down. Depending on what I pick there, the user will be restricted to be only be able to use that type of data. So I'm going to click on drop down list and just give the user two options. One is going to be standard and the other one's going to be special. Okay, so we want to track whether it's a standard order or a special order, right? Then we want to pick whether we want this to be a customer only type of transaction. That means only the customer and customer transactions are available to use here a vendor only, only for vendor and vendor related transactions or transactions, so it's available in both. So if I pick a transaction, I can say, make this available in invoices and also make it available in bills and purchase orders, okay? So I can do that. And then if I wanted to show up in a print, I can do, I can show it up in a print. Now there's a limit to total of three custom fields that can be printed so you don't uh, clutter your invoice. So I'm gonna X out for a second. Here, I'm going to hit yes, and I'm going to click on one of these custom fields already created, and then I'm going to uncheck uh, the ability to print on that one just so we don't, uh, so we don't run into that uh, maximum three limit that we can uh, print. So again, up to three can be printed. So you see this little print enabled icon? That's going to be a limit of three custom fields that can do that. So let's do that again. It was uh, order type, and we were going to make order type a um, a drop down. Right? We said we're going to do drop down, and then we're going to do, let's say, standard and special. Okay. Then we're going to do a transaction level custom field, enable it on an invoice or in a purchase order, and then click on a uh, print form so they're available to be printed only on bills. We don't print bills, so we don't see that checkbox in there. I'm going to click on save, and there it is, order type. How will we use this? Okay, let's create a transaction. Let's go to new invoice. And then I'll pick an invoice I already created to save some time. And then we should see a custom field down here that says order type. So when I click on that, I'm going to make that a special order. Then I'm going to click on save. Then what I'll do is I'll pick another invoice that I already have, again, to save some time in the process. We're going to scroll down and make this a standard as well. Click on save. And let's pick another transaction here. Let's say this one for 500. And then we'll scroll down and make this special and then click on save and close. So now we have three transactions that have these custom fields. How do we use the custom fields? Several ways. Let's go to reports and let's search for sales detail. Let's, let's look at any sales detail. So let's do sales by customer detail. That's one of the reports that we can start from. And then up here where it says group by customers by default, but I can scroll down and pick one of my custom fields. So I see here order type then click on run report, and then I get to see all my standard sales and all my special sales. So that's in a nutshell, how we would use custom fields. Now, what does it look like when you print that field into the custom field? So let's say we have this invoice and notice that it doesn't say not printable on the form. That doesn't say it. That means it's going to be printed. So when I click on print preview and go to print preview, and we're going to see what this looks like in PDF format when we email it to our customer, we see right there order standard, order type standard. And I, as I mentioned, there's a limit of three we can print because we, can, we don't want to clutter that invoice with the information. So you do have to think ahead of time what type of uh, custom fields you want to show on the actual report. Let's move on to the last section here, which is a custom report builder, only available in QuickBooks Online Advance. Most important lesson that you need to know so when you build custom reports, you need to know whether the information that you're getting comes from the header field. For example, locations and tags will come from the header. And what comes from the line field, for example, the specific product that you're selling and the class and the customer job you're assigning it to. So by knowing whether it comes from the header or the line, you'll know what filters to use when building a custom uh, report using the custom report builder. If you were to run a journal report on any transaction, the first line of the journal report will always show you the header, and then the, every, the second and every line under it 
would be the line item level. Why that's important is because when you build a custom report, you will be able to choose whether you want to get from the header line or from the line item line, and we'll do an example of that. And lastly, the custom report builder, particularly what makes it really powerful is you cannot just filter the type of data you want to see, you can also group it. And you have three layers of grouping. When you have up to three layers of grouping, you can create really cool pivot style uh, type of reports. So we're in QuickBooks Online Advance, and then we're gonna go into reports in the reports menu. And then we're gonna scroll down to where it says custom report builder. You're gonna see an invoice report, an expense report, and create new report from scratch. You definitely wanna play with all those. I'm gonna show you just the invoice report so we can see just what this looks like. And then we're gonna click on the date filtering and we're gonna click on this fiscal year. That way I'm seeing all the transactions across the entire uh, fiscal year. Here where it says customize, that opens up the drawer on the right hand side where I can pick which fields I want to see. This is called columns, but that's really fields. There's a seven next to invoice. These are my header. Okay, so I'm, I'm pull pulling up seven pieces of data from a header. So let's say the only thing I need is the invoice date, the invoice number. I'm gonna uncheck amount, click on show all columns, keep customer name, get rid of open balance, and get order, get rid of shipping date. Once I close that, then I only see three fields. Let's say that's all I want from the header of the invoice. Now from the lines of the invoice, or from the details of the invoice, I'm gonna collapse that grouping and open up invoice line items. And let's say from here, I want to see let's say a line order. So I get to see whether it's line one, line two, line three. I'm gonna go down to show all columns. I'm gonna show, let's say the product and service. I wanna show the quantity. And I also want to show the ledger amount. That's the total amount of the specific line in negative or positive, negative being a credit, credit being a sale, positive being a debit, debit being a cost. So particularly with inventory, the positives will be your cost of goods sold and your negatives would be your sales amount. That's why I really like ledger amount and not so friendly for non-accountants. Accountants will understand the whole concept of debit and credits really quickly. Let's say I also wanna enable class and let's also enable location here in the top. We'll enable location so we get to see all sorts of really interesting information laid out in here. So we have all the data, it's laid out in there. It probably doesn't make sense at this point. It should start making sense once we start grouping it. So I'm gonna click on group and let's say the first group I wanna do is product and service. So the first thing is, what products and services am I selling? So I have all that stuff laid out in there. The second one is, let's say we wanna do class, and then let's say the last one will be, let's say the customer name. So again, we're, this, this will all be custom, this will all be based on what you're trying to achieve. So when I close that, I get to see all my products here. These are all my items, products and services, and I can expand any of these. For example, this one called labor, and I can see where they land in terms of classes. I can expand wholesale, and then I can see which customers I sold it to. I probably wanna change the order of these, so I'm gonna click on customize. I'm gonna scroll up and click on layout. Then I'm gonna go down to ledger amount and click and drag that all the way to the top, let's say after customer name, so it's uh, readable there. And it's not showing up in a summary, so I'm gonna tell it to calculate it. So I'm gonna click on group. I'm gonna go to edit group calculations and I'm gonna um, scroll down, hold on, give me a second. Let me go into group, I might need to make the screen a little smaller. Go to edit group calculations and I, wanna, I want it to group ledger amount. So instead of grouping the quantity, group the ledger amount and then I get to see it here very, very clearly. Now what's also cool is I can add um, another filter here, I'm gonna click on customize, I'm gonna go up to columns and then I'm gonna go to account in my chart of accounts. So where am I in my chart of accounts? and then I'm gonna bring account type. So I'm bringing account type into the mix, which is gonna make things very interesting. And then here under grouping, let's say I wanna get rid of customer name and bring in another grouping for account type. It's gonna make a lot of sense in a second. I'm gonna X out of that, and then we're gonna, we're gonna go back and look at our sales again. So let's take a look at this material sales. Then we go to Shopify income, and then we see that that $200,000, it's only income, there's no cost. But let's say I pick uh, potentially an inventory item, an item that has inventory, it has cost of goods sold, it has income. You get to see for this particular item under the retail class, we have all of our sales, which is 8,306, that's my income. 
and then I see my cost of goods sold, which is 4,200. If I don't want to see this current asset grouping here, I go into filter, I go into account type, which should be down here, and then I'm going to click not equals, and I'll click my option here, which is, um, it was other current asset, right? So I'm basically excluding it as a filter. Again, a lot more powerful than the regular report section, and then I'm no longer looking at that piece of information. I'm only focused on income and cost of goods sold. So now when we get a subtotal, we get a subtotal of profit, income minus cost of goods sold. Custom Report Builder, super powerful. You can't break anything by pressing different things and trying it. I recommend really that you should try it and see what kind of reports you can build for your clients. All right, so in summary, QBO reports, you have an entire database that you can choose from. You should build a custom bookmarks menu so you can access them quickly. Try classes and locations. They offer the most amount of flexibility for reporting purposes. You can also play around with tags as well. Custom fields only available in advance. They will enhance the insights and you can also pick what type of transaction type you want to see that in so you can customize that user experience. And lastly, the new Custom Report Builder is a total game changer for creating re reports for your small business clients. Thank you very much for tuning in and have a wonderful rest of your day.